What is up guys? It is me, Adrian Jensen from ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this effect that you can see on the screen right now. Let's do it. Before I get into it, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Normally when I make a tutorial, I really plan out exactly what I'm going to do before I do it. But I just feel like because of the nature of this effect, a step-by-step -step tutorial is not really going to help you because yours is going to look different than mine anyway. So instead, what I'm going to do is I have a kind of an idea in my head of what I want this to look like, but I don't have it planned out. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. And what you're going to see, instead of being a real tutorial, is going to be more like you can follow along with my thought process. So uh, it might be a little bumpy. I might make some mistakes, but I'm not going to edit them out to make myself sound smarter. I'm going to leave them in and then correct them as necessary, but I think we're both going to be better off for it. So actually, uh, right now, here we are in Premiere, and I have the clip that I intend to use, and I'm going to go ahead and scrub through to the part where I want the effect to actually begin. <laughs> what is up, guys? It is me, Adrian Jen. <laughs> so yeah, I'm thinking right there. So I'm going to grab the razor tool and just give that a slice, a little slicey slice, and then I'll right click on it, replace it with an After Effects composition. So let's wait for that to pop up automatically. Boom, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and pre compose it right off the bat. All right, so there we go. We've got our footage in After Effects. Um, right now, I'm gonna uh, click this window button and come down to Extensions and hit Adobe Color Themes. And this is going to bring up a really cool little window that's going to be pretty useful for, you know, designing color schemes. So uh, whenever you're, you're doing an effect kind of like this and you want to make sure for sure that your colors will look good together, uh, you can use this extension and it will generate for you some palettes of colors that are guaranteed to look nice. All right, so we'll leave that alone for now. Um, right now I want to maybe duplicate this first layer and I'll name the top one freeze frame, however I decide to spell that, and I will right click on it and hit time freeze frame. And let's go ahead and grab the mask and I'll have Roto Bezier on to give me a cleaner mask and I'm just going to go through and cut this out. And since it's a freeze frame, I'm not actually rotoscoping here. I'm going to go ahead and try to make it pretty tight. So there we go, we've got this jerk all cut out real nice. So some of you guys might know about the Tunit plugin from Red Giant, but I don't know uh, if you're aware, there's actually a cartoon plugin built in After Effects already. You just type cartoon right here and you can just drag that on and it will do the same thing for free. Now the, uh, the Tunit cartoon effect has a lot more features to it, but this will work for what we're trying to do here. So let's just play around with these settings to try to come up with something prettier. Okay, and I'm actually going to add a layer style to this, which is going to be a stroke. And I will change it to be an interior stroke. And I'll change the color to black. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose this. And on top of that, I'm going to add an effect called Rough and Edges. And what this will do is it'll make it so the exterior stroke has some variation to it instead of just being a consistent width all the way through. You don't have to do that, but I like it makes it look less like I just threw an effect on there, uh, which I did because I am not doing this by hand, guys. So there we go. I think I might actually add a puppet pin effect to this as well so we can kind of make it have a small bit of subtle animation. It's real, real small. Kind of simulate slow motion or whatever. Straighten those arms out. All right, there we go. Um, so I think now would be an acceptable time to come up with our color theme so what I want to go ahead and do is come up to layer and hit new solid. The only reason I'm doing this is so I can use the color picker to grab the red that's on my shirt because I know I want to use this color. Actually, maybe I want it a little brighter. So before that, I'll go ahead and add a hue saturation effect. Just bump up that saturation a little bit. Can, I mean, you can change this dramatically if you want to make it something crazy. I'd rather keep it red, but just make it a red that I like a little better. So we'll go back to that new solid thing so that I can grab the color and this just so that I can steal the hex value of it. So that when I go back to the color theme window, I can paste it right here and it will generate for us a theme. And now we can just cycle through the different types of themes and find one we like. This one gives us a lot of color options. I like it. Here we got red and green. That's going to look Christmassy, which I don't really want. 
That one's all red. So actually I'm gonna go with the triads. So now we've got a little blue, a little red, a little yellow, um, but in a way that they're specifically designed to work together. I think I want, might wanna add kind of a border to this. So I'll just add a new solid and I'll choose this yellow color, but just really make it pretty pale. Just give it a similar hue though. And using the masking tool, I'm gonna to uncheck Rotor Bezier and I'm just gonna make some kind of lightning bolt shapes. All right. Now kind of twist those around so they're more diagonal. Maybe this is a better direction. Okay, and maybe behind that I'll add a brighter yellow solid and uh, mask that off towards the edge. Okay, and if I pre-compose those, I can call them border. Bring them down below my dude here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a turbulent displace effect. Maybe jack up the size quite a bit. And the amount I'll keyframe maybe about 20 down later on to zero. And then I'll go ahead and I'll animate the offset turbulence to kind of move in the direction that we have suggested here. All right, that's, that's cool. It suggests some movement kind of. Um, it's taking up too much space, but it, I can fix that by just scaling it up like this. And there we go for now. So uh, for the background, I'm just going to take the existing background and pre-compose it again. And I'm just going to um, freeze frame that as well. And I'll add a tint to it. And change the colors to one of these blues. Alright, and now let's pop on over to the Production Create website and we're going to start grabbing some assets. So I'm going to open up the textures and overlay filters. And I think I want to start with the ink bleed transition number one. Go ahead and download that real quick. Let's bring that into the project. Drop it into the composite as well. I'll fit it to the composition and we're going to time remap it and just come forward to a point where you look like you have enough coverage. I don't want to go too crazy. And we'll add a keyframe there and then delete the last keyframe. Now I'll add a tint effect to this as well. And let's see what color we want. I'm going to use the darker blue and give it a multiply transfer mode. Maybe just so it doesn't seem like it stops so suddenly. I'm going to duplicate it. Get rid of the time remap on that second one, but add a new time remap. Stop it earlier so there's not as many. And we'll move it forward in time maybe turn this upside down or something so it doesn't quite look like it's the same clip. All right, I think I'll go back into that border composition as well and perhaps download the second ink bleed transition. Bring that in over the darker yellow. Maybe we'll use it as like a alpha mat to kind of give us a little bit more interest. I think it would look good if we had kind of a a flash to bring this all on in a more exciting way and I think a great way to do that would be to use this film burn number three right here or perhaps this one number four which is a little bit slower bring that in I'll put it under the actor that it's an add or something and we'll just use that so the elements still just pop on I want to put some more texture on this border I'm still not happy with that so what can we do? Maybe this old film strip overlay, we can bring that in. While that's downloading, I think a cool thing might be to add a few more layers to this yellow part here. So actually I'm just gonna duplicate this. And on this top one, I'm gonna right click on the mat and flip it vertical, just so that's different. And I'll change the yellow solid to be an overlay transfer mode and then just offset the mat forwards or backwards, whichever, it's not really gonna matter. That looks pretty cool. Maybe even do it again. This one, I think I'll make it a darker color transfer mode to bring the color back to what it originally was. Our file's downloaded, so I'll bring that in as well. Bring it into the composition. Maybe give it an overlay transfer mode or something like that. And if we click this button here, that'll make it so that it uses the transparency of the layers below it. 
so that it won't show up where those layers are supposed to be transparent. Scale it up just a little bit so it's not intruding as much. And that's going to give us these cool film things on the side and some grain. Okay, I'm liking the look of this actually. You know what it's missing though is my name. So uh, we need a cool looking font. So actually I'm just going to find one on the internet. I don't have a special website that I use for fonts. I just Google them and uh, free fonts are readily available. So we're going to find something cool. Let's just do it. I'm expecting this to take a long time, so obviously it's going to be very sped up right now. I'm thinking I might try to find a 3D looking font. Here we go, completely changed our mind. I'm going to go with uh, this one, Carnivale Freak Show Regular. Let's download it. It's See, it's uh, free for commercial and personal use. That's perfect, so let's open that up. Go ahead and install that. Now I'll make a new composition and call it text which I'll use for the text, so grab the text tool, go ahead and select the fonts. Something cool that you might not know is that when you install a new font, you actually don't need to restart After Effects for it to work. So I'm going to make it the red color, and I did say I wanted something 3D, so actually I'm just going to fake it with uh, with this font here, because I like this font. I didn't really like any of the 3D fonts that I could find. So I'm going to make this second copy that I just made the darker red color. And uh, scale it down a little bit. Maybe do it again. All right, there we go. And so I can bring that text into the main composition. Let's just animate it in. And I'll pre-compose that whole thing so that I can put the corner pin effect on that layer to make it match the perspective of our scene a little bit better. And this should just look pretty cool. I think I'll probably add the cartoon effect to this layer as well. And the stroke, same as before. And of course I'll pre-compose it with my rough in edges. I think I want to add a second instance of text as well, which I'll do right here in this composition. And I'll animate it in in a less dramatic fashion. I also used this found footage overlay effect here to add some texture, and then I did a color correction to the whole thing, and here's what I ended up with. Now if you like this tutorial, you should probably make sure to do the stuff that I tell you to do every week, which include checking out the website for more tutorials. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of them here. We've also got plenty of stock footage that you can download and put into your own projects. And um, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube and see years and years worth of videos and be alerted right away when we come out with new ones including tutorials and you maybe you want to even check us out on instagram where you can see us uh, when we announce things like new stock footage packs or um, maybe even behind the scenes content for upcoming projects which might be pretty cool and finally if you have any questions about this effect or any other effect or want to make any requests you can hit me up on twitter and that would be awesome thank you guys for watching have a fantastic life